Hi, my name is Maya, author of Fit and Fabulous and the creator of the 3X Fit 90 Day Transformation from MayaMFitness.com. And in this video, you'll learn eight ways women's bodies change after 40 and what you can do about it. As an MPC athlete and fitness professional, I've helped hundreds of women lose weight and maintain a healthy lifestyle. I remember when I was in my 20s, and 40 seems so old, like a lifetime away. I had no concept of time. Time moved so slow back then. And I certainly did not think about my body changing in just a few short years. And I say short because time flew by. I have a teenager and an adult child, and I can't even remember most of their childhood. Anyway, we'll get to that in a few seconds. Be sure to stick around to the end of this video for a free gift. So let's get into it. According to an article written by Dr. Thaddeus Aliabadi, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that wrong, there are eight physical challenges that our bodies are going to experience as women over 40. If you're on this challenge, I'm sure you're very familiar with this first one. We fight against this one every day. Number, Number one, one, your metabolism, your metabolism slows, slows down. down. As we grow older, the efficiency with which our body produces energy naturally decreases. What can I tell you? We just have to deal with it. Even if the routine of our daily activity doesn't change, as we grow older, less of our calorie intake is burned. This causes a reduction in energy production and the unburnt calories turn into fat. The remedy is simple, but simple is not always easy. Both your diet and exercise routine must significantly change. A smaller calorie intake coupled with an increase in regular exercise will help you maintain the weight and energy levels of your body's younger self. Keep this up into your middle age and watch the longevity become your best friend. Side note, an increase in willpower is also required. Number two, why is my hair falling out? Well. Only a small percentage of women actually lose enough hair to cause bald spots, but in our 40s, most women will experience their hair thinning out a bit. Estrogen plays a significant role in women's hair growth. It's not surprising that hair loss increases as the approach of menopause causes estrogen production to decrease. To alleviate thinning hair, you can reduce the frequency of washing your hair, then the natural oils produced by the scalp can better condition your hair. Always use a conditioner. Limit the use of styling tools that rely on heat and limit chemical treatments like coloring. After that, you're probably thinking, I really don't know what else to do with my hair. Work it out, girl. You got this. You can come up with a better routine for your hair. But if you have greasy, kinky, curly hair like mine and you want some advice, drop me a comment below and let me know. I'm sure we can make it happen. Number three, your bladder can sometimes elude your control. Again, the culprit is the decrease in estrogen production that accompanies perimenopause. Estrogen loss weakens the muscle that, that support the bladder and urethra. When the muscles are weakened, any abrupt clenching of the diaphragm can lead to leakage. That sounds weird. This means that you can no longer safely cough, sneeze, or enjoy a good belly laugh. If it makes you feel better, men have their own problems in this area too. The good news is there are several effective remedies that can enable you to resume fearlessly laughing, coughing, and sneezing with gusto. Taking off a few extra pounds will alleviate the pressure on the bladder and reducing your intake of alcohol and caffeine beverages will make leaks less likely. Now here comes the fun part, Kegel exercises. Kegel exercises will help rebuild weakening bladder and your reflux muscles. If none of these methods produce a cure, your OBGYN can provide medical procedures that are very effective. If you're finding value in this video, make sure to watch my next video and be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss future content like this. Number four, memory loss. Your brain basically goes AWOL. 
there's got to be a good reason why you're just standing in front of the refrigerator staring at it. Right? Some loss of brain function between perimenopause and postmenopause is so common among women as to be almost unavoidable. One more time, it's that pesky midlife refusal of your ovaries to pump out the usual dosage of estrogen that is the problem causer. Back to the estrogen again. Women have estrogen receptors in two areas that control memory. And when there's less estrogen, there are negative structural changes in those areas. Okay, ladies, so I don't know about you, but for me, when an important thought comes to my mind, I have to execute on it immediately or immediately write it down on a post-it note or schedule it on my calendar and put an alarm on it. Otherwise, those thoughts have just left the building and they probably won't be back for a couple of days. But there's some good news about memory loss. Crossword puzzles and similar brain exercise can help maintain your brain function. Just because brain fog is normal doesn't mean you can't fight it. Your brain's operational efficiency is largely dependent on the amount of oxygen produced to, produced to it by the bloodstream. So what's good for your heart is good for your brain. This means a vigorous program of exercise. We're back to exercise and nutrition again. A healthy diet, and exercising your brain with crossword puzzles and reading difficult books will optimally maintain your brain function, including your recollection that it was the mayonnaise that you were looking for in the refrigerator. Also, your brain's unplanned vacation isn't permanent. The brain bounces back after menopause and it adapts to lower estrogen levels and it compensates. Number five, urinary problems will increase as we get older. Yeah. According to Dr. Lauren Stryker, MD, the director of the Center for Medical Sexual Medicine and Menopause at Northwestern University, fine, Feinberg, Feinberg School of Medicine, estrogen appears to provide protection against the bacteria that causes urinary tract infections, UTIs. UTIs become more common in women as perimenopause and then menopause shut down the ovaries production of estrogen. Most urinary tract infections can be treated quickly and easily with antibiotics and fortunately symptoms usually disappear within two days. When taking antibiotics, it's important to take all of the dosages prescribed, even if you're feeling better before you run out of your medication. Failing to take the entire prescription as recommended could result in a relapse of the infection. Number six, your menstrual period can become unpredictable by the time you reach postmenopause. Your periods have permanently ceased. However, from perimenopause through menopause itself, estrogen production can be wildly unpredictable. This can result in varying menstrual patterns. Periods can be either closer together or further apart. Mine are closer together. Yay me! Some cycles will have an extremely heavy flow and there may be months where your period doesn't occur at all. Most of the more effective remedies for chaotic menstrual cycles such as oral contraceptives or hormonal releasing IDUs must be administered under the doctor's supervision. If menstrual irregulation becomes bothersome, see your OBGYN. Number seven, now we have to deal with vaginal dryness as well. Low hormone levels begin to make the vaginal walls thin and dry. Vaginal sexual activity is very important. It helps with stimulating blood flow to the vagina, keeping vaginal muscles toned and helps maintain elasticity and the length of the vagina. If vaginal dryness is a problem for you, try using over-the-counter vaginal lubricants or talk to your healthcare provider for prescription relief from a vaginal hormone cream. And finally, number eight, loss of estrogen. Is hormone therapy the answer to loss of estrogen? If you've been paying attention here, you'll notice an overarching theme. The ovaries reduce production of estrogen, which begins during perimenopause and finalizes in menopause itself. 
it is the villain in most of the previous scenarios. So why not replace all of that missing estrogen with a robust program of hormone therapy? The answer is, traditional hormone therapy presents an increased risk of breast cancer, heart disease, and stroke. So it is contraindicated for most of the minor problems that women face beginning in their 40s. When traditional hormone replacement therapy is appropriate, it must be administered under the careful supervision of a qualified physician, usually a gynecologist. However, there is a compromise available. Local estrogen applied as a topical cream provides a lower dosage of estrogen. More importantly, the hormone is absorbed directly into the bloodstream, so it's less likely to affect the rest of the body. See your OBGYN to learn if locally applied estrogen may be effective in alleviating your problem. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and check my resources below on how to bring your waistline down and be the best version of yourself. Click the Fit and Fabulous link in the description box and don't forget to download your free gift. Until next time.